In the previous video, you have learned how to create a new client UI application using the project template in Visual Studio 2010. You have also added the data's file, images and other resources used in this project. In this video, I will show you how to create a simple navigation application using client UI navigation framework. You will learn how to add a new page that shows the contact list using MVVM pattern. Let's start by adding a new model class to represent the contact data entity for the application. Select class and name it contact. Our project already contains the model base class that implement the required interfaces for data binding. So let's just inherit our model from the model base class. Now let's add the properties for our contact model, starting with the name property. Notice that the onPropertyChange method needs to be called in the property setter. This notifies the binding engine whenever the property value has changed. Now let's add the remaining properties for our contact model, such as the address, phone, cell and so on. Once the properties are defined, let's move on to the methods and constructors for our contact model. We will need a set photo method to assign the value of the photo when the contact data is created. Then create a constructor that accepts X element as its parameter to simplify the data parsing process from the XML to the contact model. Now that we have the model ready, let's move on to create the view for the contact user interface. We are going to add a new page to the views folder. Select Intersoft UX page from the list, name it contact list. In this walkthrough, we are going to use the Visual Studio Designer feature to add user interface controls to our page. Make sure you have your toolbox visible all the time. Let's start by adding a dock panel. Reset the layout properties to fill the panel to the entire page. Then, add a glass label control into the dock panel. Dock the glass label to top using the Adorner Designer. Next, set the content, font size and height property. For a better layout, probably you also need to specify some width to the dock panel. Let's set it to 640 pixels. Next, add content transition to the dock panel and remove the grid. Reset the content transition layout and dock it to fill using the Adorner Designer. We are going to use a list box to display our contact data, so let's add a UX list box to the content transition and set the properties. Notice that I set allow reorder item property to true, this allows users to reorder the list box item using drag and drop. The UX list box normally shows a simple string data, but can also be customized to place any silver light controls for richer presentation. We are going to use a custom layout to display our contact data. To do this, Create a new data template in the UX page resources and name it contact view template. Put in the XAML that defines how we want the item to look like. Then bind it to the list box item template property. Finally, we are going to add a status bar to display the number of available contact, and also the details of the selection.
let put on some text block inside a stack panel, something like this. OK, now that we have the model and the view ready, let's move on to create the view model to describe the view that we have just created. We're going to create two view models. The first view model is to describe the contact view, and another view model for the contact list view. Let's start by creating the first view model. Add the email URI property for a navigation compatible format. Then the constructor and properties. Now, add a new class for the contact list view model. Inherit it from the view model base. In this view model, I am going to add several properties that describe the currently selected contact, such as the selection status, selected item and contacts count. And here is the methods and constructors for loading the contacts. The load method parses the contact data from the XML file and add each contact to the contacts collection. While this constructor loads the contact and set the photo to the image that we have prepared earlier. The listener notifies the binding engine when the contact collection has changed. Now that we have the model, view, and view model ready, the last step is to bind the UI elements in the view to the view model. We will be doing several things here such as binding the item's source and selected item of the list box, and all the UI controls in the templates to the properties of the view model. First, let instantiate the contacts list view model in the contact list page. Then, we will bind the view model to the data context of the page. This allows the remaining child UI elements to inherit the same data context, which is the contacts view model. Next, we will bind the item source and the selected item property of list box to the contacts property of the contacts list view model. We are going to use two-way binding mode for the selected item. Two-way binding ensures automatic data synchronization between the UI control and the objects. This means that any changes in object will be reflected to the UI in the other way around. Now let's do the same for the rest UI controls in the data template which is used by the list box to display the contact data.
Now, we are going to bind the first text block control in the footer area to contacts count property of the contacts list view model. Then, consecutively bind the second text block to selection status property. Alright, now we have most things ready. Let's see how easy it is to show the page in our navigation application. Simply add a navigation button here, and set its navigatory property to the user-friendly URI of our contact list page. We are done. Let build and run the project to see how our navigation application works. Here we go, our rich navigation application. Notice the navigation button we just added. Click on it to navigate to the contact list page. Notice the journal button and the browser address is synchronized automatically. You can explore several things on the contacts list, for example, selecting an item and see the status bar being updated. Drag an item to reorder a contact. Thank you for watching Intersoft Solutions tutorial video. For more videos, please visit our support website at intersoftpt.com/support.